Hey everyone, it's Rainbow Rage here with another Inkscape tutorial. Been away all summer, so I haven't done one of these in a while, but I'm getting back into things. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite features in Inkscape, the Align and Distribute dialog. You can access the dialog through this button here, going to Object drop-down menu, and it's in there, or the hotkey Control shift a You'll notice I don't have a pony example here, and that's because you honestly won't use this much with ponies, but whenever I do other things, like, I have this thing open all the time. It's very useful. First off, there's the align. What you want to want to do is uh, set it up first. So you want your relative object here. Last selected, which is uh, what I, the default and what I prefer, that will, the last object you select will not change, and everything else will align itself relative to it. First object is the same thing, but it's obviously with the first object you select. Biggest and smallest object, the either the biggest or the smallest object is going to be the one that's unchanged. Page, well, if you use the page, I don't often, uh, but if you do use the page, this will uh, align it relative to the page. The page is the uh, sort of black rectangle you get here. Drawing will go relative to your drawing, and the drawing is made up of all the objects you've made. So here my drawing is sort of bounded kind of like that because that if you drew a box that surrounded all your objects that would be your drawing and then you have selection which doesn't actually have a relative object and what that'll do is all the objects you selected it'll align to the average alignment of them uh, so we're going to go with last selected and so what we're going to do is you have one, my one object selected here I'm going to select another. So this one is the one I selected last, so it's not going to move. But this one's going to align itself to it. So since these are identical objects, uh, the center alignment, right alignment, left alignment, those aren't going to do anything. But if you align relative to an object of a different size, then it matters. So I can align here, there with the center, or with the bottom and the top. Same on the vertical axis. And if you center it, both vertically and horizontally, obviously now you're going to be exactly in the center. You can also align a right edge to a left edge, like so. You can do all the other edges. And I find if you use a horizontal edge alignment and then a vertical edge alignment, you'll get uh, the corners lined up exactly. And that's useful um, you know, if you want to simulate pixel art using vectors. Uh, you also have the text buttons here. Those just do the same thing, except uh, you have to use them if you're working with text. You can't use the normal ones. You also see this button here, Treat Selection as Group. Now what that'll do is it'll treat your whole selection as uh, one big group. So, in so normally, if I were to align these three objects together, if they're going to all line up because it's just treating them as individual objects. If I had treat as group selected, now when I align them, it treats it as a group. So it'll take the, this one's still not going to change, and it'll align it to the center. Okay, so now we have the distribute dialog, and the way the distribute works is it'll take the two extremes, and then distribute everything else evenly along them. So you see I've got my two extremes here. Those are going to remain unchanged, and then everything else will distribute itself evenly. So now when they're all scattered here, it still works. It's not as obvious. And I still have group selected. If you align them all, now it's very obvious they've been distributed evenly. Uh, other options you have here are the randomize button, which will just scatter them randomly. Staying in the same general area, but just scattered. And the unclump button here. And what this will do is it'll, it'll do its best to get all the distances between the objects to be equal. There's also this remove overlaps dialog here. So, 
What this will do is it'll move the object the shortest distance possible to remove any overlap plus the margins you've entered. Uh, problem with this one, it takes a little getting used to because it you cannot differentiate between horizontal and vertical. It just goes the shortest distance. So here if I want a 20 pixel vertical gap, but I leave the horizontal set to zero, you see here it moved these ones horizontally because that was a shorter distance than getting the 20 pixel gap vertically. So the way to get around that is you just set a large value for your horizontal and then it will do it vertically. Uh, there is a better way to do that though. I find most of the time when I'm using this one, I'm actually wanting to do something you can do in the columns and rows or the rows and columns dialog which you find other object. There's no hotkey for this one by default. So the rows and columns, you just set the amount of rows, the amount of columns you want, you set the margins you want as well, and, uh, and you just hit go and it'll, it'll do its best to line that up. Here, obviously, the 4 and 4 didn't work because I only have 12 boxes, so it automatically just went to a 4 by 3, and if I wanted something different, I can edit that again, so if I wanted a 6 by 2, there you go. You can also align just the nodes um, using this and if you uh, select your node tool it'll automatically change the dialog to node controls now if generally if something I do do something with ponies it'll be through this and uh, you'll see here I, I an example here is when I did with Twilight you see this little flap here I wanted that to line up right here on the corner so I had to line the nodes up sort of get that 3D effect here. Uh, so you select both paths and see I, I, I get the nodes pretty close and you do have to get them pretty close for this because A you want you don't want to change your paths uh, significantly uh, but the, the node one the, you cannot set a relative object it'll just always average it. But you hit vertical and horizontal line and then you get your nodes right lined up so that is a flush corner. Uh, Generally, moving nodes, if I either want straight lines, or if I want to make a 3D object, like if I wanted to make a box here, um, you know, I just make my simple box shape. And I'll just do this quick and dirty. It's not going to be a good box or anything. There we go. And I want to be this one to have be orthogonal, so I'll line it all up vertically, horizontally. Now I take the other um, box object, send that to the bottom. And now I will line up the corner nodes. And see if you make a mistake, gotta undo that. All right, so what I'm doing here is actually I still have the one up there selected, so I'm sure I only have the correct one selected. So now that's lined up together. Now you, when you line something up like this, you're going to want to make sure that you take this line and move it in a bit, just so that it's not they're not following the same line, because Inkscape uh, is a little buggy and it'll... Oftentimes when you do that, you'll get a little like white sort of streak in here if you have two lines directly on top of each other. So just make sure they're move one off a bit and then you'll be fine. So that's align and distribute. I hope you learn from this. I'll do more.